Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Laura. So my name is Colm O'Donnell, and I'm the head of the School of Biosystems and Food Engineering in UCD. So this afternoon, then, I'd like to give you an overview of the programs we offer in our school, um, give you an outline of the curriculum that we cover, and the, the, the career opportunities that graduates in these programs have gone on to in the past. Uh, so just by way of introduction, uh, to, in terms of our school, uh, we're a very research active school and we cover the domain of biosystems and food engineering. So it, it's the science associated with, with biological engineering and uh, particularly applied uh, to bioresources. And you'll see from the examples of our projects in, in, in they have a strong process engineering uh, perspective but also from a sustainability or environmental protection angle, those areas are covered also. Uh, we've approximately 100 postgraduate uh, research students and uh, a, 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 an overall staff of around 40. Um, so in terms of the domain which we cover, anchored in the processing domain, uh, we would look at design of processes, control of processes, particularly for biomaterials. And then we look at optimizing those processes from an energy perspective, uh, from a, a safety perspective. So carrying out risks of biohazards and what processing interventions are required to achieve uh, safe uh, products, uh, high quality products with the required functionality. Also, staff have strong competencies in the whole area of green technologies, life cycle assessment, carbon footprinting, applied to these bioresources. And then we have a, a group of faculty then who specialize on the, on the impact of processing, particularly on air quality, water quality, soil quality. So impact of industry on the environment. And what underpins our approach really is a kind of an engineering or first principle based mathematical approach. Um, combined with, with, with data acquisition, primarily using advanced sensor approaches. So it's the interaction of biological engineering to biomaterials, bioresources. So probably best to explain what we do with reference to some examples of some of our flagship projects. This was a, a research project carried out by one of our faculty, European project, and it's looking at biomass, and how we can minimize the impact of agri-food chains on the environment, how we can use waste materials, recycle them, take waste streams, develop nutraceuticals or, or other uh, chemicals. How, for example, you can use uh, food agriculture production for food or, or, or biofuels or biofertilizers. And so it, what distinguishes our school and our approach really is to taking a whole systems approach where the impacts of different aspects, uh, processing approaches, uh, different uh, agri-food supply lines or product supply lines on the environment are considered. Another project we look at is taking, for example, a waste stream from a product, it could be a dairy or a brewery or a biogas industry, looking at what way then we can um, valorize or make use of that waste stream, whether it's whey from a dairy process or spent grain from a brewery, and how we can perhaps use that as a source to grow microalgae, and those microalgae then can be harvested for applications in cosmetics, nutrition, fuels, etc. Um, and the final example I give you is the use of cold plasma technology, which is it's, it's an emerging approach which can be used for decontamination and it has avoids many limitations associated with traditional chemical decontamination technologies. And we're also with colleagues who are looking at plasma to generate fertilizer, plasma activated water for antimicrobial effects, et cetera, even applications in wound healing. So the domain of biological engineering activity cross cuts a lot of different areas. And certainly a lot of students who come to complete taught programs with us, be it a one or a two year program, I would say a substantial proportion, perhaps 25, 30% remain with us to complete a PhD program. And these are some of the funding agencies and projects that, that 
uh, former students have completed uh, projects on when they have finished. And generally the PhD programs are fully funded scholarships. So once you have a 2-1 grade in your taught master's program, you would be eligible to apply then for one of our PhD programs. So today I'd like to focus on our short one and two year uh, taught programs. So these are, are, are very focused programs uh, over a small number of trimesters where you come in and do an advanced graduate program. And this is uh, for e either in 12 months or 24 months. So the domains of these programs then are, are anchored to our, the biosystems engineering area, and they focus on food engineering in particular, but also environmental technology, sustainable energy. And we have a new program now in the whole area of digital agriculture. It's a really large growing area. Uh, a lot of data is acquired in agriculture, and uh, we have projects running with, with Microsoft and Google in looking at different aspects uh, of data, data capture, data processing, et cetera. So if I could just start off by then giving you an overview of our ME Biosystems program. So this is a two-year full-time program with inbuilt work experience. And uh, so there isn't an, an internship and that differentiates it from our other programs. And Essentially, you will have a, 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 a three or, or four year engineering degree prior to coming to UCD. And then over four uh, trimesters, you will complete a, a two year program. So it's a, it's a professional engineering program. Uh, it's 120 credits. You do 30 credits per trimester and includes a, a research thesis and also then a, a work placement. And Again, strong focus on, on process engineering, refrigeration, the environmental areas through life cycle assessment. Uh, it's becoming a, a, a very um, in-demand module now, life cycle assessment, because all products increasingly, they will have to have some classification uh, quantifying their impact on the environment and, and their life cycle assessment. So it's there's a need for graduates to upskill risk assessment again very important impact on the environment and there are a number of options then for to take elective modules as well but it's anchored in in strong fundamental engineering first principle courses plus some application modules and again um, the internship is probably uh, it's a very attractive feature of this program so previous graduates have have um, completes uh, internships with, uh, with Glambia or project management or, or Diageo. Um, so one of our graduates last year uh, completed an internship with the PN Group and they design um, processing plants for a global uh, customer base. Here's one in, in, in dairy processing. And it's a great opportunity really to integrate the classroom learning experience with on, on the job, a practical uh, knowledge acquisition. You get an opportunity to work with, with clients of project management. So in terms of future career, you, you can, you're can you well placed to uh, get a, a job opportunity either with the engineering design company, design the factories, the companies building the factories, or the companies um, who, who, who are getting the factories built on site. Um, one of our graduates, he worked with Diageo. Some of his comments here, he was looking at the, in, in, both in Belfast and, 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 and Manchester. These are some of the pictures he included in his final report. So to get an opportunity to you see the scale of processing up front, like the, 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 the scale of these continuous plants really high. Uh, you, you see it firsthand, the need for advanced control systems. Um, challenges in, in, in high speed sorting, etc. So, up to 72,000 bottles per hour. So, again, high throughputs. Um, so, that's our ME Biosystems program. We also offer then for graduates who, who do not necessarily have a full time, a full engineering undergraduate program, we offer a one year food engineering master's. This is a 12 month program. And uh, so, it's over three trimesters. So you get an opportunity uh, 
to upscale in the technology and engineering associated with the production and processing of food. Particularly suitable then to graduates from a range of disciplines, both engineering, science, and perhaps related disciplines, physics, for example, who are interested in pursuing a career in the global food and drinks business, the environmental area, uh, some, of, some of the whiskey companies. Um, so again, you, you'll study a, a, a core of modules in, in process design and process control, and then some more application specific modules relevant to, to food. Uh, a unique aspect of this course then is you have a large research project that you complete over the third trimester. So you get an opportunity to apply the skills and knowledge you have acquired in the first two trimesters. Generally, this project is carried out then with a faculty who's a research active group. So you get an opportunity to work with other PhD students and perhaps some postdocs and get to use some of the software packages and some of the design tools that they are using. Um, you also have an opportunity to do your project in consultation with an industry partner. So if you wanted, for example, to, to work in the, in, the, in, the, in the drinks industry or in the dairy industry, you could pick a dairy based project uh, and um, acquire expertise and knowledge in an industry specific area. Uh, examples of the subjects you would study would be food chain integrity, food refrigeration, uh, global cold chain safety, etc. Um, so again, a unique feature is that this program is literally 12 months, start in September, finish the following August, and it has a 30 credit or a four month research project embedded. Again, you can see a full list of modules online for our program. Uh, the next program I'd like to talk about today is the Environmental Technology Program. And again, similar to our last program, this is a 12 month program. So really it gives opportunities for, for graduates in a range of disciplines who would like to obtain employment in the whole environmental protection area, whether on the compliance area with a regulatory agency or with a design company in designing environmental solutions, or perhaps working in an industry where you minimize the impact and demonstrate compliance of that industry with, with, the, uh, with the requirements of the environmental license which the company has to operate. Uh, again, 12 month program. So uh, same structure as the previous program, um, 12 months, three trimesters, and then one trimester is spent full time working on your research project. And then you get an opportunity to leverage the first two trimesters or 60 credits of taught modules where you are exposed to faculty then teaching you topics relevant to pollution or energy or life cycle assessment. And these are research active faculty, uh, who, uh, many of whom are global leaders uh, in their field. Um, as prior to commencing your project, you also undertake research and teaching methods where you're exposed to um, some background in terms of statistical analysis, uh, how to do a literature review to prepare you for, for, for doing your project. And also there are a number of oral assessments um, where you present uh, project updates uh, in a seminar style to your colleagues. Again, full list of modules and, and options are available uh, on our university website. So the, the, the final 12 month program that I'm going to talk about is our MSc Sustainable Energy and Green Technologies. Um, so th this again is a program for graduates in a range of engineering and scientific disciplines who would like to work in the sustainable energy area. So you would look at state of the art in green technologies, um, the benefits of those, how you assess the benefits, how they compare to, to, to traditional uh, technologies. Uh, you, you also uh, get exposed to experts in, in business. There's an entrepreneurship element to it. And uh, so you'll be able to assess these technologies both from a, an economic assessment, but also a technical. So techno-economic feasibility studies are an integral part. Again, the program is taught by uh, UCD faculty who a number of whom on this program are at the top 1% of their field. So you get an opportunity to be exposed to very research active faculty. Uh, 
the subjects you that you would learn on, on this program would be uh, energy systems integration, bioeconomy, air pollution, and a key across many of these programs is life cycle assessment. So you'd be able to assess the benefits of a particular technology. Um, and, and for a technology to work, it must stand up from a, a, a technical feasibility, an economic feasibility, and the environmental feasibility. And again, you have the 30 credit research project, which gives you an opportunity to carry out a significant body of work over a four month period uh, with a faculty member who's a leader in that field and also get an opportunity to work with his or her team. Uh, and again, there, we, every year we supply a list of research topics that graduates or that our uh, research students are working on. But if a, a student has a particular interest, say in wind energy, for example, or in biofuels, uh, student may propose their students may propose their own subject topics also. Uh, again, if I was looking at doing a program, I, I I'd be saying where do the graduates in these programs? Where do they end up? Where do they get do they get jobs? So this is uh, one of our former students, Mert uh, Mert uh, was a graduate in in engineering from Turkey. He completed our twelve month program and uh, has enjoyed a, a career internationally in, in the wind turbine sector um, uh, with Siemens, uh, where he, he works with, with customers who, who want to install large wind farms and in terms of site selection, wind turbine selection, et cetera. Um, so the final program I'm gonna talk about today is in the whole area of digital agriculture. This is really a, a rapidly emerging field internationally. Uh, the, the, uh, everything is going digital. You have digital manufacturing, you, you have digitalization of, of, of different sectors. But this program refers to the digitalization of agriculture. So this is a, is a program that's carried out um, through the UCD Advanced Center. And Basically, there are a number of modules, uh, specifically in the, the digital area in terms of the databases, the computer science, the machine learning, the mathematics, the, the programming, computer science, and also an opportunity to do some fundamental modules in, in different agri-food domains. Um, so you need to understand the agricultural production sector, um, but then to overlay that then the internet of thing technologies the, the, the data acquisition the data processing so uh, careers for example in earth observation where you're using satellite generated data uh, to control and to optimize the production of bioresources so again this is a program uh, it can start in september or january and you'll find further information on the ucd advanced center site um, just Google it and it'll come up. Um, so again, if I put myself in your position today, where where do where will I get a job if I do different programs? Well, this is a, a collage of former UCD uh, engineering graduates. Where are they employed? So graduates in the programs I mentioned today, they've, they've worked in Glambia, they've worked in Portimona, they, 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 they work in Diageo, PwC, uh, IBM, project management. So many of the companies here, Microsoft, um, employ graduates in, in these domains. Uh, Procter & Gamble, uh, another one. So many companies who have a, a processing division will have to look at the impact of processing or their processes on the environment, want to improve sustainability. So there are excellent career opportunities uh, for graduates with these technical competencies. And many companies are now uh, appointing sustainability directors, sustainability program managers. So the whole area of sustainability now has been integrated into many industry sectors. And some of the programs I outlined today would prepare you well for careers in those areas. So to summarize then, the five programs I briefly outlined to you today are as there. Um, more and additional details are available on the UCD website. You may also contact me by email or follow up with Laura. But essentially, we have a one two year program with an internship. That's our ME Biosystems. And then we have other more focused short term programs, 12 months in duration, full time. And this one can be done two years over part time, where 
you, you come and complete a program over a very short duration, three trimesters. So it's really quick, but it, again, it gives you a degree uh, it, and an opportunity to acquire strong technical competencies in an area where there is market demand. So Laura, if I can hand back to you at this point, and uh, maybe you might take the lead on, on, on the Q&A. Sure, thank you very much, Colm. That was a really, really interesting um, presentation. A very brief whistle-stop tour through your school and obviously the programs that are available within your school. Um, I think there's a great depth and breadth of programs available um, and something for of interest to, to our attendees today. So thank you very much. Um, I will just reiterate, if you do have questions, you can pop them in the Q&A um, using the control panel at the bottom of your screen. Type your questions in there, we'll, we'll answer them um, hopefully competently, competently enough for you um, today. Uh, but Colm, I have a couple of questions that I normally, I, I tend to get at these type of events, so I might pose yep. them to you. Um, obviously, um, within the School of Biosystems and Food Engineering, you would cover um, a variety of different programs. Do you find that your programs are, are lending themselves to be more interdisciplinary? Do they have um, any teaching overlap or potentially career overlaps with uh, programs in other schools like of engineering or potentially the School of Agriculture and Food or Computer Science or any of those kind of um, schools? That's a, a, a great question, Laura, because increasingly, the, many of the, the problems like sustainability uh, there are the nexus between science, you know, big data, engineering. So particularly when you go to postgraduate level, a lot of the projects you would carry out as part of your master's program, while they may be anchored in engineering and have engineering principles, a knowledge uh, uh, and um, collaboration is required with other disciplines. So for example, if you were doing a program in digital agriculture, you, you need a knowledge of the basic agricultural processes and production, but you also need a knowledge of computer science, a knowledge of big data. So it's the fusion of those three complementary areas that's required to solve problems, which are all multidisciplinary in nature. Uh, so similarly in, in engineering, we're designing process. So we design them from a, a technical perspective, economic perspective, but increasingly, we have to take into account the impact on the environment or the energy consumption. So we have to work with colleagues in, in, in energy engineering or we have to, or in environmental technology compliance. So the, the, the strict divisions between different technical disciplines, they, they, they break down as you address large problems which require multidisciplinary inputs. I think that's great for attendees to, to know, and it's something that I think is going to be important going forward. And I think even for career opportunities and things, I think it's good to know um, and, and be doing programs that are more multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary, which is which is great. Um, and then I know you touched upon in your presentation, obviously, students who are looking at um, or excited about the research uh, project or the thesis that they will do as part of most of these programs. Um, you are giving an indication that students could come with their own ideas or they could make a selection from the, the school proposes. Is there also an opportunity to do industry collaboration for those projects as well? Yeah, really there are three options, Laura. Um, we, we would have a group, we would, the, the faculties, uh, staff members would put forward a list of proposed projects every year. In addition to that, then students, for example, if they really want to work in a particular sector, like the whiskey sector or the brewery sector, they would propose a, a project. Um, but also we, we carry out a, a lot of projects in consultation with industry partners. So um, there, there, are, there, there are a lot of opportunities to work with industry partners and pick a specific industry problem where you would work with, with, with a postdoc, for example, who, uh, who's working on a larger project and a subset of that project then could be taken as a master's taught project in, in that third trimester. Okay, and again, can I just say that if you want to work in the sector, the project is a great opportunity to tailor your program outcomes to that specific sector. So you have industry relevant knowledge. Um, so it's a great opportunity. The project selection really shouldn't be rushed into. You should give it consideration because um, it can really help you in, in your career um, aspirations and of targeting of specific companies. Yeah, so it's an, it's an important aspect of the courses that we offer and people should, and students should take um, time to, to realize what they're interested in, maybe, and as you said, take into account maybe what they want to do career-wise because it can have a significant impact. Um, great, thank you, Colm. Um, and then just another question around um, 
supports available to students, maybe career supports or academic supports available um, at UCD level or even specific to your particular school? Well, it, for all of our programs, uh, we, we, we have a program director, so he, he would deal directly with students in the program with any academic matters they would have. We also have a staff student committee in our school where, where, where students could raise any issues of concern or, or issues where they, they need any support or assistance with. In addition, then our university has very strong students and welfare supports where we have a, a student advisor for each college. So again, there are great op there are opportunities to interface then at school level and also at university level to, to get supports. And also we're fortunate that we have an excellent careers um, a careers uh, and appointments um, um, officer in our university who, who runs a large office where uh, students are prepared for, for interviews um, and it, uh, assisted in completing programs to assist them uh, to obtain future employment. Because And they would run career fairs, for example, where, where large companies who are seeking to hire top talent in, in different areas would come to UCD and the UCD Careers Office would act as a kind of a broker in terms of matching up student, relevant students and alerting them to opportunities with key employers who come directly to UCD. Great. Thank you very much, Colm. Um, I think that's all the time we have for today. We've kind of run slightly over time, but that's fine. Um, so thank you to Colm for giving a great presentation, great insights into the courses available uh, within your school. Thank you to our attendees for listening in and um, engaging with us today. 